What's up, everyone? Thanks for stopping by the old trusty gas-powered bike page. All right, now that we are deep into spring, the social distancing is hopefully coming to a close here pretty shortly. Although, if you have followed the bike page here on Facebook or YouTube, I have been out getting a ride in here and there. You can't social distance any more than out riding a gas-powered bike by yourself. All right. Anyway, it is spring maintenance time. For those folks that think that these are high-maintenance bicycles, that is not the case at all. If your bike is built correctly, you take care of it when you ride. And what I mean by that is not riding it as hard as you possibly can. Everywhere you go, hitting potholes and flying over railroad tracks and curbs and whatnot. They are not motocross bikes. They are motorized bikes. There is a difference. So anyway, back to the point in hand. I personally schedule myself a little appointment and maintenance time twice a year. I go over the nuts and bolts, check out my parts, make sure they're in, still in good shape. If anything's getting any wear on them, I'll replace that because I do not want to get out there far from home and break down. Like I said, if you followed our bike page or YouTube for any length of time, I have had this exact same bike for six plus years. This particular bike has about 7,000 miles on it, give or take 100. All the videos I've ever shot, done, or recorded, I have ridden the same bike. Lucky for me, I have never been out and broke down, knock on wood. Because I say, I take care of my equipment. I don't ride it like it's a motocross bike. And it's never given me any problems. But I will admit, things happen to me too. The other day, if you've caught my last video, I stopped to watch the railroad building new track and a bridge. And it was a pretty windy day. I had the bike up on his kickstand, just like I see right here. It was, like I said, pretty windy, but the wind kicked up on me. So while I was videoing the giant auger boring the hole in the earth, my bike got blown over, and it did break my clutch lever. As you can see, it is wobbly, and it broke the piece of aluminum that houses my lever. Lucky for me, it still functions, so once again, I got home safely. But I am going to change that first. And then I'm going to do a little maintenance. Now my personal maintenance, I'm going to grease my wheel bearings, lube my chain, check all the nuts and bolts. Because as soon as the social distancing comes to a close, I'm going to get together with some other guys and we're going to take some lengthy trips. Sometimes we go 20 miles, sometimes it's 40 miles, sometimes it's 10. It all depends where we're going. All right, well, I'm going to get this big fella racked up and get started on some work. Now that I've got it racked up so I can get a little work done, as you can see, I've removed the front wheel. This part of the maintenance, I personally only do once a year, but I'm going to grease my wheel bearings. Got the new clutch lever and the mirror reinstalled. And that dude is working great. While I had it apart, I put some lube in my clutch cable because that dude gets pulled thousands of times. So a little oil doesn't hurt that at all. All right, let's go put some grease in the front wheel bearing. Some bicycle wheels have what we call a sealed bearing. You can't see the bearings at all. It's all one piece. Usually when they're good, they're good. They don't lose their lubrication. But this type bicycle wheel has the old school ball bearings. 
in there. I don't know if you can see them, but they're in there. As you can see, it still has a little grease in it from the last year of riding that I did, but I'm gonna put some new fresh grease in to keep it riding smooth and resistant free. The easier your wheels roll, the less work your engine has to do, and the smoother you ride also. Okay, so you can pack grease in here with your thumb, but who wants to get grease all over their thumb? So I personally use a tiny screwdriver with my grease. And I just keep getting more, like packing an old school car wheel bearing. And I just keep packing it in there. Should get my camera over for the demonstration, I guess. That would help. And I work it down in the bearing race. As you can see, I work the grease into the bearings all around. Now I'll snug my bearing race nuts back up and my stop nuts that keep my bearing races from backing out and uh, make sure it spins freely and smooth. If you feel any roughness in your bearings, you might want to have your wheel replaced. For those of you who are going to do this at home on your own, when you're tightening up the nuts, don't make the nuts too tight and make the axles drag or hard to spin because that'll prematurely wear out your front bearings and wheel. It should spin freely, but not have any slop shake up and down like this one does without being tight. All right, well, let me get this dude tightened back up and reinstalled so I can move on to the next tidbit. Got the nuts tightened back up. As you can see, I want it to spin freely. It has no up and down play. If you have any wobble in it, just keep turning your nuts a little bit, tightening them up to get rid of that because you don't want your front wheel to wobble. You want it to turn free, no hard spots, and it's ready to install. As you can see, the crease is in there. Got it reinstalled. Look how easy that spins. That's what you want. A well lubricated bearings and a smooth rolling front wheel. Okay, moving on to the next tidbit. Now moving on to the rear wheel. There you go, rear wheel. Okay, I've already taken my brake arm loose. Got my chain off the idler pulley. If you have the standard one, you just have to loosen the nut and slide yours down. But luckily for me, I have upgraded to the spring pulley and you can just flip it up and take your chain right off. Okay, having said that, moving on, you have to take these nuts loose right here. But a little tip before you do that will make your job a lot easier. Everybody hates taking off the rear wheel because you got to realign the chain, et cetera, et cetera. It's not that much work, but it is a few more steps than doing the front wheel. So what I do to make my job a lot easier is take my trusty Sharpie and I mark where the position for my rear wheel should be. And then I will come over here and do the same thing. Right there. You can go all around it if you like. I will for the sake of this video. 
Okay, and then when I reinstall my rear wheel, I put it back in my marks, and I don't have to fool with loosening, adjusting, loosening, adjusting to get back where my wheel originally was. Just a friendly little tidbit. Alrighty then, I have the back wheel reinstalled. I wasn't going to bore everyone with the greasing of the bearings of the back wheel. They work pretty much the same as the front wheel. Loosen your bearing races just enough to get your grease inside there so you don't disturb any of the internal parts of the coaster brake. And then you have to take it all apart and that becomes a big hassle. So be careful. If you don't feel safe doing that yourself, if you pull the back wheel off, generally your friendly neighborhood bicycle shop will be more than happy to grease the back wheel. A lot of them don't care to work on the gas powered bicycles, but if you take the wheel off, they will grease the bearings for your wheel because it is bicycle related. Okay, having said that, as you can see, got my wheel reinstalled right where my marks are at. So I didn't have to fool with a bunch of relining of things. Same with that, it's kind of dark. I don't know if you can see that. And Mr. Wheel spins freely and happily. Nothing's rubbing, nothing clanking. Everything is where it's supposed to be. Okay, moving on. The last two little tidbits. It's not like 10,000 parts you have to maintenance. I'm gonna lube my drive chain. I personally pull the master link around. That's my starting point. When I get back around to the master link, I'll know I'm done. Now there's all kinds of chain lubrication out there, so you can use whatever one you want, because any lubrication is 100% better than no lubrication on your drive chain. It's real important. It's what pulls you every inch of the way. It spins quite a lot, so it wants a little lubrication. It also keeps you from breaking chains and et cetera, et cetera because it spins free, it lubes the front drive sprocket teeth and the teeth off the rear one, so it doesn't give any premature wear, because metal on metal dry, dragging across each other is wear. Okay, well anyway, I will share how I do mine. I'm not a big fan of the spray lubes, because a lot of times it makes an enormous mess. Same thing with an oil can unless you have a little tip applicator or what have you. But what I personally do is I use like STP or Motor Honey or Lucas Oil myself because it is a thick, heavy lubricant. Gets down in the lengths of the chain where it's important, not just the top of the chain, but in the inner workings of the chain and keeps my stuff spinning freely. So I personally put some in a cup and I use a paintbrush. Good old paintbrush from Walmart. And I apply the lube just like so. Turn a little bit. You can see the oil is actually going on there and running in. So you know it will get in the links of the chain from the pins and the rollers of the chain and depending on how much you ride I would consider myself a medium to higher mileage type of person I'll do this a couple times throughout the year and I will spin around and do the same to my regular bicycle chain because it's important to lube that chain also. With the coaster brake, it's helping you do all of your stopping 
and the easier it spins the easier it is to pedal your bike to get started okay so i am going to finish up lubing my chain and that should conclude my springtime maintenance so i can ride freely all summer long and uh i'll do a little bit of maintenance in the fall but hey we'll cover that when the fall gets here it's just now getting summer so let's not jinx that okay then let's wrap it up both our chains are lubed front wheel bearing and wheel bearing in the rear is greased our new clutch lever not broken is installed and now we are ready to ride for the summertime i did not forget the spark plug for those of you who are thinking well you didn't do the spark plug in the, in the fuel filter i did that a few months ago on my bike on this particular bike this is my bike and still clear and clean only a couple months old so i'm not going to personally do that but if you haven't done yours for quite some time it's a good idea that, to do that now before the summer gets here and you want to go out and ride okay if you have any other questions or are curious about fixing this that or the other on your personal bike feel free to go to the youtube channel eco trans gas powered bicycles feel free to like and subscribe we appreciate it and you can scroll through the videos and see what you're repairing on and there should be a video there to hopefully help you out with your problem